The focus on the ancient Celts isn't particularly on a single tribe that ruled over a particular territory or country. Instead, we're talking about a large and diverse civilization that was felt all the way from Spain, Portugal, Ireland, and Italy. But because the Celts never recorded their myths in writing and only handed them down orally, the knowledge of the Celtic deities didn't pass on through generations in the manner other mythological beliefs did. Still, some literary writers were smart enough to realize this, and they ultimately recorded some of the myths using whatever resources they had. So, with that knowledge, let's try to explore the extensive, diverse, and colorful pantheon of Celtic mythology's gods and goddesses through a list of ten. Number 1. Anna Anu, also known as Anna, Dana, Danu, and Anan, was one of Ireland's oldest existing Celtic deities. She was referred to as a mother goddess and may have represented the first forms of vegetation and wildlife. In this way, the Celtic mother goddess was frequently described as a beautiful and educated lady, linked to nature in its spiritual essence while simultaneously standing for the opposite but cyclical qualities of wealth, knowledge, death, and regeneration. Her role is particularly prominent in Irish mythology, where she is regarded as the heavenly matriarch or mother of the Tuatha de Danann, also known as the people of Dana, or children of goddess Danu. There is a group of Celtic deities who may have formed one of the significant pantheons of pre-Christian Gaelic Ireland. In terms of history, Anu was one of the essential Celtic goddesses in Ireland and Britain and Gaul, despite her relative absence from folklore references. Number 2. Dagda The most significant father figure deity among the Irish Celtic gods and goddesses was the Dagda, a.k.a. the Good God. He was referred as the chief of the Tuatha de Danann tribe of gods and was often represented by fertility, agriculture, weather, and masculine strength, as well as by magic, wisdom, and druidry. These characteristics do explain his fame and terror among the Celtic druids. However, many aspects also bear striking similarities to the divine attributes of Odin, the chieftain of the Asir tribe of ancient Norse gods. Reinforcing his character as the father figure among the Celtic gods, the Dagda was frequently shown as a chubby older man carrying an intimidating magic staff or club called the Org Mor. Legend states that this weapon could kill nine people with a single strike and also revive the dead. Number 3. Morrigan Among the Irish Celtic gods and goddesses, Morrigan was named as the mysterious and rather menacing female deity linked to fate and warfare. Her name, Mor Eogain, loosely translates to Phantom Queen in contemporary Irish. In keeping with this enigmatic name, Morrigan was a powerful shapeshifter in Celtic mythology, a foreteller of disaster, and a warmonger. This suggests how Morrigan was possibly perceived as a war goddess. In contrast to these seemingly chaotic and warmongering traits, Morrigan may have also been revered as a Celtic goddess of sovereignty given that she served as the symbolic protector of the land and its inhabitants. Number 4. Camulos Camulos may have been more of a Roman Celtic god than a principal Celtic deity. He was sometimes equated with Mars or the Greek Ares, making him a Gallic god of war. His true lineage comes from the Remi, a powerful Belgic tribe who ruled northeastern Gaul. The fact that Camulos' name was given to multiple locations in the area, like Camulodunum or Colchester in Essex, England, suggests that he was considered one of the prominent ancient Celtic gods in Britain. And while at first he was only worshipped on stones where oak wreaths were set, later depictions showed Camulos to have ram's horns on his head. Number 5. Tyrannus Tyrannus formed a triad of Celtic gods along with Tautatus and Isus. He was revered as the god of thunder, thus drawing apparent comparisons to Roman Jupiter and the Greek god Zeus. The god was represented with a lightning bolt even on a visual scale, which made him and Zeus look more alike. On the other hand, Tyrannus also portrayed holding a sun wheel, one of the most familiar emblems discovered on Celtic artifacts, suggesting his eminence in the related pantheon. Interestingly, he was also related to fire, whether it be sky or air fire. Ancient Roman writers, such as Strabo and Julius Caesar, made some unsettling claims about the practice of burning sacrificed victims inside wicker man structures to please the god. Number 6. Angus Angus, meaning true vigor, 
was the son of the Dagda and river goddess Ban. He was a Celtic god associated with romance, youth, and creative innovation. Being the head of the Celtic gods, he could magically control the weather and is said to have caused the sun to remain stationary for nine months so that Angus could be born in just one day. This was done in Irish tradition to conceal his illicit affair and the resulting pregnancy of Bon. In any case, Angus revealed himself to be a lively individual with an endearing, slightly wacky personality who usually had four birds circling and singing about his head. According to legend, Angus moved into the sea surrounding Newgrange after tricking his father Dagda into handing him control of the Bruna Boyne, the spiritual abode of the chieftain of the Tuatha de Danann. Number 7. Bridget In contrast to the brooding aspects of Morrigan, Bridget was revered as the Celtic goddess of healing, springtime, fertility, and even smithcraft. She belongs to the Tuatha de Danann since, according to the tale, she is the Dagda's daughter and is said to have an extensive collection of tamed animals. These animals, which included sheep and the king of boars, the ox, would scream out to warn the fertility goddess. Beyond the plot, what intrigues many enthusiasts about Bridget is her history as one of the principal Celtic deities in Ireland. As a result, Bridget was likely occasionally revered in all three of her personas, the healer, the poet, and the smith, continuing the Indo-European morning goddess tradition and she may have been a triple divinity, a composite of three entities. Number 8. Bellinus The central sun deity for the Celts was Bellinus. He was also linked to the horse and the wheel, and depictions of him in their composites often show him as the dazzling sun god gliding over the sky in a chariot carried by horses, much like the Indian god Surya. Other images show him as a lone horseman who wields thunderbolts and shields himself with a wheel. Given his prominence in antiquity, it is not surprising that the Romans associated him with Apollo, the paradigm of the young god of light and one of the syncretic Greco-Roman deities. Number 9. Ogmios Rarely do we find supernatural beings that are just connected to language in the majority of old mythological stories. Ogmios, a god of the ancient Celts, defies this trend because he was regarded as the god of, of eloquence. He resembled an elder Hercules. They both carried clubs and arrows and wore lion skins. On the other hand, Agmios outdoes himself in terms of bling by having lengthy chains connecting him to his group of devotees linked to his tongue, which is made of amber and gold. The visual scope essentially served as a metaphor of the Celtic god's ability to tie his followers to him via speech and persuasion. The Gaelic mythology also heavily includes Ogmios' later Irish counterpart, Ogma, who is said to be the son of Dagda and a member of the Tuatha de Danann. The Irish deity is credited with creating Ogham, the first writing system in Ireland. Number 10. Epina, the protector goddess of horses. Beyond syncretism, the pantheon of the ancient Gallo-Roman religion included only Celtic deities, and even Rome itself and Epona fit into the rare second group, given the visual indications of the patera, cornucopia, and foals in some of her existing sculptures. The Celtic horse goddess was probably potentially connected with fertility, in addition to being revered as the female deity and guardian of horses, donkeys, and mules. Speaking of representations, most of the dedicatory inscriptions to Epona that archaeologists have discovered were written in Latin rather than Celtic, indicating her prominence in Roman culture. With this, we come to an end for this video. We hope you enjoyed watching it and found the brief introductions of these deities amusing. Do like and subscribe to show your appreciation. We'll see you next time. Until then, stay mythically mad.